All right, so you'll notice the polynomial I typed in my calculator was the unfactored polynomial. I just want to show you how if we didn't want to rely on factoring or if we couldn't, how we could still find those zeros using our table. So uh, you could type this in, you could type the original in, it, it doesn't matter. So let me go ahead and go to my table just to show you uh, how we could find our zeros. If I take a look, notice in the Y column, wherever Y is equal to zero, there's where my zeros are located. So zero is a zero. Uh, 8 is also a 0, and if I scroll up to negative 3, I betcha, yep, y is, uh, y is 0, so negative 3 is a 0 as well. So what I want to do then, since I'm in the table, is let's just use it to find out the sign of the graph in each interval. So pick a number smaller than negative 3, so maybe negative 4 or negative 5, and check the sign of the y value. The y value is negative, so I'll put a negative sign on my graph or on my number line, meaning if I check the graph, uh, which I will in a second, the graph will be below the x-axis in that interval. Uh, pick a number between negative 3 and 0, like negative 2 or negative 1, and I can see that my y value is positive. My graph will be above the x-axis in that interval. Pick a number between 0 and 8. So anything down here, notice my y values are all negative. And then finally pick a, uh, an x value bigger than 8, so 9 or 10. And I can see that there, my y value is also positive. Uh, notice my signs flip-flop. We talked about in the last video, that's usually the case, but not always. Sometimes your signs won't change. Uh, if I want to confirm this by looking at the graph, which we don't need to do, but I think it's a good idea to use the table and the graph together, it looks like it's a little bit off the screen. But I can see that uh, over here, my graph is below the x-axis, just like we predicted. Between negative 3 and 0, the graph is above the x-axis. Between 0 and 8, once again, the graph has dropped down below the x-axis. It's negative. And then anything bigger than 8, the graph was way up high. It was also positive over there. Okay, so my table, my graph all confirm those signs. To answer this question, then, we want to know where the polynomial is greater than or equal to 0. In other words, where it's positive. Well, between negative 3 and 0, there's an interval where my graph is positive. And then from 8 onwards to infinity was another interval. This time, because we could be equal to 0, I included the square brackets. Because at negative 3, your graph is 0. It's right at the x-axis. So I can be equal to it. So I can use brackets.